Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. Today's topic is how to transform your physique fast, getting your biggest visual change in about four to six weeks. It's a secret that celebrities don't want you to know. Well, maybe they don't know it either. So here is the purpose of this video. Let's say your goal is to make the biggest visual impact quickly. And you have between four or six weeks to do it. What do you do? What exact things do you manipulate with your diet, your training, your recovery, etc., in order to make the biggest visual impact? One of the reasons I made this video is because a while back, I was actually contacted by Hollywood people. That's right. I'm famous. And um, they had a pitch for a show and they uh, did a pilot episode and it never got picked up because of my involvement, of course. But um, they were asking me, hey, listen, what sorts of workouts and what sorts of diets are going to give the biggest visual impact. Because the reality show was like people are trying to get jacked and they sort of follow them around. And I gave my piece. Uh, some of the advice was taken, some was not, as, as almost always occurs in Hollywood consultation. But uh, now I'm sharing with you guys what I would figure is kind of the tip of the spear. We have a show to film in four to six weeks. We need to get people in unreal shape. Or even if it's a transformation contest, it would be the fastest way to transform and here are the details. Before we give you the how-to, there are some rules and expectations. First of all, this is something to understand intellectually before we even enter the process. Fat loss is the biggest path to massive visual changes quickly. You can't gain muscle very fast. And for that reason, if you, let's say, have five weeks and then you have to be, um, oh, you know, at a photo shoot with your fiance, let's say you somehow accidentally um, said the right thing to a, a girl a few times, and then you're going to get married, going to be getting engaged soon, or something like that. And uh, what was I getting married soon? And the fiance is like, "Hey, like you know, you gave me this ring, and it was on the beach. This is great. Can we get some photos taken of the two of us, just like fiance pictures? People do weird shit like that. That's some white people shit out there. So fine, okay, five weeks. But you're like not in amazing shape. You could sort of hypothesize. Well, you know." If I got bigger, uh, more muscular, I would look considerably more different. The problem is maybe if you do unreal things, you can gain a few pounds, two to three pounds of muscle in five weeks. And that'd be really impressive, especially if you're not coming off of injury or off of detraining or something like that. Okay, fine. How much fat can you lose in five weeks? Which you is maybe like 10 pounds, right? You're not going to gain 10 pounds of muscle. And the, the visual effect is wildly, wildly different. So you have to remember when I sort of open up this diet and training protocol, you're going to notice that it is a brutal fat loss diet. And there's for a very good reason, because per amount of matter we can move, moving fat out rather than muscle in per gram accomplishes a bigger visual impact in the short term, plain and simple. Right? Number two, anything less than a month to try to look notably better is probably too short. You can try it. You can go on a three-week diet, same principles as I'll describe in a bit. But you may be underwhelmed for how much effort it takes. Maybe you dieted your ass off for three weeks, and, and one person at the photo shoot is like, oh, you look pretty good. And you're like, really? You're like, ah, I think actually the sun is uh, coming down at a different angle. You look the same as always. Like, God damn it. Right? So I wouldn't recommend it. I would say at least four weeks, up to six weeks. Okay, that's how long we can implement this exact protocol. Of course, you can diet conventionally, but uh, that's going to be a little bit more of a sustainable diet, and it won't be as insane. To that, point number three. It would be brutal. The brutality is something you just have to make peace with because you're the person that decided to wait until five weeks out to look good. Well, maybe it snuck up on you and that's totally fine. That if you want to pull that lever, there's some shit's going to go down, right? It's kind of like, you know, if you're on a submarine uh, launching thermonuclear warheads and, you know, you lose radio contact or something like that, like you pulling that plug of launch this has really big consequences in before you press the button or whatever the hell sh shit works to launch the Trident missiles from the sub to go destroy the world with nukes. You understand, I guess, this is going to be a very different world if I press this button. But just the same way, it is going to be brutal if you press the button to go, okay, I want this fast transformation. It won't be fun. I mean, if you're a masochist, it'll be hilarious, and amazing. But short of that, you're getting into some shit. It's a good thing. From two perspectives. One, if you're doing this, it's good to psychologically prepare for what you're going to be going through because, you know, at least then you don't have to suffer, uh, suffer. at least you don't have to suffer from the idea of surprise. You know, like if uh, you wake up and a bug is biting you, that's terrible. Uh, it's a surprise and it's unpleasant. 
But if you're like you're in the middle of the jungle and bugs have been biting you for the whole day and one lands on you and bites you, you're just like, ah, fuck, right? Same idea as if you're expecting the workouts and training to really, really suck, the diet to really suck, then, you know, like day 15, you're going to be like, yeah, like, it's going fine based on how I expect it. If you think, oh, you know, I've done fitness challenges before, I'll just eat a little bit less, do a bit more, it's not going to cut it. It's going to be brutal. And so the second reason you want is to tell future people that will do this through you because many of you are personal trainers or coaches or help people with their fitness one way or another. And some of you may very well have friends approach you and say, hey, listen, you know, I got a, uh, I got a bachelorette party here in five weeks and I'm not trying to look awful. So help me out. I want to do as much as I can. You have to tell them, look, it's going to be terrible. You're going to want to quit all the time. And if they say yes, then at least communication existed. Point number four. Yes, the transformation itself, the four or five weeks that you do this, it will transform your physique considerably. But at the margins, because it's only four or five weeks, it's not as much transformation as it could be. And thus, the fractional difference in how you look that day based on what you do the day before, peaking, hydration, carbohydrates, things like that, that makes a big difference on how you look. So for example, if you're a bodybuilder and you took 16 weeks to diet down to 3% fat, how the fuck you lean one way or another? Even if you miss your peak altogether, you're still going to look lean as fuck. If you totally miss your bodybuilding peak, yeah, you won't win the show, you won't take top five, but you walk out into the street with a shirt off and people are going to be like, holy crap. And they're like, yeah, I'm really out of shape. They're going to be like, what? <laughs> there's veins on top of your abs. And I think those also have abs and veins on top of them. So there's, you know, t difficult to really screw up a good visual appearance fundamentally if you're already super, super lean. In this case, since you're only losing maybe eight to 12 pounds or something like that of body fat, yeah, it's a lot to lose in a short time. But if you really hit the peak right, that visual appearance is really going to do really awesome things as opposed to you hit the peak wrong and it looks like you lost only six pounds of fat. Six pounds of fat is notable, but barely. 12 pounds of fat is very notable. But if you do the wrong things with your water and your salt and your carbs, you can look like you only lost six, even though you lost 12. If, however, you do the peaking very properly, you lost 12, you might look like you lost 16 pounds of body fat and even gained some pounds of muscle. So peaking is very important. We'll cover that in here. And then lastly, hugely, this is a no-brainer. I'll say it anyway. This is not sustainable. You do not simply take two of these and put them back to back and go, hey, there's a 12-week diet. <laughs> you won't last. And if you do last, you'll have such a nasty diet rebound that you'll just get fat all over again. And the whole process will be miserable. So those are the rules. Let's get to the methods. And as per usual, hopefully, I'm trying to make this as straightforward as possible. There's no real big tricks here. Once you guys sort of hear me talk about it, you're going to be like, ah, shit, I could have told you that. So first, for diet, in protein, you eat your body weight in pounds and grams of protein. So if you weigh 200 pounds, you eat 200 grams a day. Very straightforward. For carbs, you keep the minimal, which is to say 5 to 10 grams per meal. Okay, that sucks. And all of it usually in veggies. So green veggies especially, the amount of fullness they give you and the amount of micronutrients they give you for how few calories they have is the best of all the foods. So it's just going to be lean meat and steamed or grilled or fresh, raw, mostly greens. That, you know, a total of 10 grams of carbs if you subtract out the fiber, which is a lot of greens, but you'll need them because you'll be starving to death. Fats are traced from proteins. That means you can even eat things like salmon, pretty fatty proteins. I wouldn't eat like you know, pork sausage or anything. Keep them bodybuilding-esque foods, but you can eat even slightly fattier meats as long as you keep those carbs to 5 to 10 per meal and veggies. Trace fats come along. If you really want to lose faster and you really like, really want to make a dent, then you cut your fats in those meats considerably. So you eat like lean fish and chicken and egg whites, and then you have between zero and three grams of fat per meal or something like that. And you will lose fat incredibly fast and feel concomitantly awful. My recommendation is to do four meals because the meals are bigger. You can get fuller from them and have more of a psychological satiety. If you have little tiny, tiny meals and you're eating like a bird, it's going to drive you insane. My next recommendation is to have the first meal three hours after you wake up to push more of the food towards the evening so that you can have your last meal just before bed, not be ultra hungry between meals. And because you'll have your last meal just before bed, it satiates you just enough to let you go to sleep because sleep is critical and you may be in a position where sleep is very difficult to get because you're such a huge deficit. Your body's starving on all systems. It's going to wake you up. It's going to prevent you from going to sleep. It's going to make you hungry. This doesn't solve the problem, but it you know mitigates it to the extent possible given the magnitude of the caloric deficit. Point number two, your weight training. 
five to six days per week of weights. Because you want to present that best physique, you got to put as much throughput into the muscles, catabolism and anabolism as possible. You train twice a week, you look fine. You train five to six days a week for, you know, six weeks, you're going to look you know, pretty cool at the end, right? Not pounds and pounds of muscle, but maybe a few. And maybe you can hope to retain all of your muscle with this training volume. And if you retain all of your muscle while losing eight to 12 pounds of fat, gee whiz, you know, that's notable. That's definitely notable. You want to do full body? Or in a more technical way is you want to train every muscle you want to keep. So if you just don't care, uh, like I don't care about my calves. If they get way smaller during this, who gives a shit? You don't have to train your calves. But every muscle you want to stay a similar size and not shrink down and be pathetic, then you train that muscle. So usually it's full body. High volume, generally, you're pushing the limits because you want the most throughput possible. High volume training not only builds the most muscle, it breaks down the most muscle and requires the most calories to repair. So if you do relatively high volume training, then your total amount of body change is very high, both on the fat burning end and the muscle building end. We want to, want to maximize that, right? One to three reps in reserve, generally, when you're going pretty close to failure, this is hard training. Short rest intervals are just fine for efficiency. So if you don't want to spend all day in the gym, you can do uh, a compound uh, antagonistic supersets, like a set of pull-ups, set of bench, set of pull-ups, set of bench, set of squats, set of upright rows, set of squats, set of upright rows, shit like that. It's awful. It's brutal, but it'll do the job. And what you want to do is try to match or beat your reps and or load by tiny amounts, but you're really, your really goal is just not to get weaker. So if you can be the same strength in week one and the same strength in week five right before you peak, you really won because the amount of imposed short-term acute fatigue through that paradigm is so high that you probably gained muscle if you just kept your performance the same. If your performance fell by a little bit, you probably just kept muscle. If it falls by a ton, then you probably lost muscle, and that does not contribute to the best look possible. So push it. Push it hard. Desperately try to cling on to your performance. And the sets generally are composed of 10 to 30 reps each. You know, anywhere between there is good. Sets of 5 to 10 are fine, but they tend to, in the short term, cause a pretty, pretty decent level of like systemic fatigue for not as much caloric throughput. And sets of five just don't burn as many calories. And here, we're trying to burn so many calories that your weight training workouts, as illustrated by the short rest intervals being okay, they double as caloric burn workouts. So sets of 10 to 30 reps will be brutal, especially if you do it in superset style. But boy, oh boy, will that burn a whole lot of calories for you and helps on the other side of the equation. Cardio. The easiest way to do this is to get a pedometer. Voila. I don't know who the fuck makes it. Some Chinese company. You know what I'm saying? The Communist Party knows where I am at all times, which is good. I want them to know. Fools. Mortals. But in any case, um, my fit or some MI dot fit. Who the fuck knows? You can do better than me. I just, this is a super cheap thing I had on Amazon. In any case, it counts steps. Easiest way to go about this is to aim for 15 to 20,000 steps per day the entire time you're doing this crazy fat loss challenge thing. Super straightforward. It'll feel like, you know, you don't really have legs towards the end of that, but you will have abs, you know what I'm saying? So pluses and minuses. Or you can do a baseline 10K, roughly 10K, and add roughly an hour of hard elliptical cardio or jogging or swimming or whatever at a barely sustainable pace. You should be getting off that elliptical machine covered in sweat and like, <gasps> like that for an hour each day. Or that's 10K steps, or you go up to 20K steps. You know, whichever one fits your lifestyle and preference is the best. Really just get you the same point. Supplements. A pre-workout will be very helpful. I don't ever take pre-workout. If I was doing one of these things, I might consider it, you know, because you are not going to have a whole lot of energy eating that basically almost no food. Right? Protein sparing modified fast is really what it is. And you're going to want some pre-workout in many cases right? because it'll help you train hard and do cardio hard, which is really good. Vitamins and minerals uh, you should take just anyway. I would take a multivitamin, multimineral anyway. I do every day. Five grams of uh, daily creatine monohydrates, a fine idea. Good boost in performance. It's anti-catabolic. And um, for many people, you know, some caffeine, uh, coffee, tea, shit like that uh, early in the day for most because, you know, one does not operate on protein alone. <laughs> you can, but it doesn't feel so great and your mind's going to be all, uh, you know, really loosey-goosey. So if you want to still be an apt human being, yeah, I would recommend some caffeine. Again, I don't do it, but a lot of people get a lot out of it. All right. That's how you do the thing. And notice it's like really just one mesocycle's worth of instruction because it's just one mesocycle that you can pull this off. When you peak, it's super important to get things right. If you want to look the leanest and most full, so simultaneously leanest and most muscular looking, you just follow a, a couple of super easy steps. The day before, you want that good look, the big look, right? 
you're taking pictures of your abs, you're uh, making your fuck swipe profile, so you want a nice picture of your abs plus cock, you know, like you take it like this, which you get hard first. We get in trouble for this, Scott? All right. Yeah, send send your pictures to fuck swipe, you know, when you get in good shape. It's good. It's, an, it's the American thing to do. In any case, you got a big day. The day before is important. The day of, you're going to look good. Peaks are actually quite easy to maintain. They're very difficult to achieve. However, we're going to go a very short, simple route. First, that entire day, let's say Saturday morning, you got to shoot with your fiance, and then after a big date, flowers, hopefully you get lucky, maybe, at the end. So morning, you got to look good for the shoot. And you guys are going to be doing a couple different outfits, beach stuff, and then tuxedo stuff. So, you know, you're going to have to look good. That's Saturday. Here's what you do Friday. Friday, you wake up. And you reduce fluid to a bare minimum that entire day. So Thursday, you drink normal amount of water. Friday, you drink just enough fluid to get the food down. Okay. And you just have to be honest with yourself. Because if you're just drinking for the enjoyment, don't do that. A lot of times you can get food down with no water whatsoever. Um, for you know one of my most recent shows that I did, I had a whole day before where I didn't consume any water. And the day before that was almost no water. But... A lot of times I would start eating rice cakes, which is the worst possible thing because they make you super thirsty. And like immediately after you eat a rice cake, you're like, fuck, 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 I need water. But then like you keep chewing and swallowing and you know, clean out your teeth with your tongue. And after about 15 to 30 seconds, you're like, eh, actually I'm fine. So if you can do that, great. You're not going to get dehydrated clinically. There's zero fucking chance of that happening within one day unless you really somehow fuck up or you're walking around Saudi Arabia or some shit and that sun's killing you. So reduce fluid to a bare minimum, which can mean, look, for, you know, if you had number-oriented people out there, one liter uh, to half a liter, half a liter to one liter, maximum. If you're doing more than a liter, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Next, consume only trace sodium and fiber, very low fiber, right, and very low sodium. Fiber tends to store water in your GI tract. It'll make you look poofy. If you lower the fiber, all that will scoot out and your waist will look nice and tight the next day. Sodium stores water under your skin, which makes you look fat. If you minimize sodium for a long time, your body gets really sensitive to it and really pulls it in and makes you look worse. But just for a day, you wake up looking very dry. And also you don't barely take it in water, so that's a double effect. And then you think, okay, yeah, great, I'll look really dry, but I'll look stringy. Aha. You take a normal amount of proteins in that day. You take your carbs and you do your four times your body weight in pounds. So if you weigh 200 pounds, that's 800 grams of carbohydrate in one day. Split over, you know, four to six meals, whatever makes you happy. And half of your body weight in pounds uh, in grams of fat. So if you weigh 200 pounds, that's 100 grams of fat spread evenly throughout the day. And, you know, whichever foods are not very high in fluids, so don't like eat your carbs and fruit because you won't drop a whole lot of body water. Foods that have very little sodium and fiber. So we just knocked out almost all fruits, pretty much all of them. Uh, bananas are still fine right? Trace sodium. Uh, that's a lot of white rice, you feel me, that you're eating. Look at the labels. Pasta, just normal pasta, has a crap ton of sodium. Not in a bad way. It's just part of the food. Um, so pasta's uh, inadmissible for this. So a lot of the times, it just has to be white rice and like whey shakes or chicken, whey protein puddings. Terrible, terrible stuff. And the fats, you know, like natural nut butter is a great choice because it's completely free of sodium. Uh, and it has all the fats you need and very little of anything else. And it doesn't take up a whole lot of room in your stomach. Yeah, it has some fiber in it, but for the love of God, two, two tablespoons is no big deal. If you do this, especially eating more of the food in the beginning of the day, so that by 8 p.m. or so, you're done eating, your GI tract has time to process and get a couple poops going. So by the time you go to the photo shoot at 11 a.m. the next morning, your waist is really tight. Everything looks really nice. As opposed to being like, hey, photographers, can you give me 15 minutes? I got a little food baby I got to deliver. And then you take a dump and they're like, wow, your waist got smaller. And you're like, yeah, you should see the dump. Of course, you take pictures of it. You would show everyone. You post it on Instagram. That's what I do. So if this goes really well, which it should, it's not any magic, you'll wake up the next day with much fuller muscles than you're used to having. And at the same time, very little water under your skin, both in your body and your face. Like right now, I'm ooh, carrying quite a bit of fluids. I did not do this yesterday, right? Um, but, you know, your face looks a little thinner, a little Willem Dafoe type action. And uh, th there's your best look. You know, so we all want to look like Willem Dafoe in the end. All right. So you did it. What do you do after? Because we just really, really push the physiology pretty hard. First, you want to take a massive deload. Eat as much clean food as you want. 
I would be easy on the cheat food for at least the first week because your rebound hunger is going to be insane. If you get a bunch of cheat food, you're going to eat like 10,000 calories a day and you're going to regain all your body fat. So if you keep it clean but eat plenty of food, like, you know, tons of oatmeal and chicken and all this other stuff, turkey and pasta, then, you know, you'll gain some fat, but it'll be relatively minimal. Um, a week after that, you switch to normal eating and normal hard training after a deload week. And, you know, you'll still be gaining some weight back this week. Probably a lot of it's fluid and stuff like that. You may get very, very waterlogged the day or two after because you got very dry the day before. It's a feedback mechanism. No big deal. And as far as results of what you're going to look like when you actually peak, you know, if you do this process properly, you, let's say just for four weeks, just for four, not for six, you could be like eight pounds less fat because you could lose two pounds of fat per week, no problem in many cases. And you can lose no muscle. And because the water peaking process dried out the uh, muscles, or sorry, the dried out under your skin, filled up the muscles with carbs and fluid, you could look 12 pounds less fat and more muscular at the same time on that peak day in just four weeks, a little bit more in five and a little bit more in six. Longer than six is not recommended because it just throws you off like crazy and it's just uh, like pulling a slingshot to get you to rebound as high as possible. And it'll cause massive fatigue, increase in injury risk, and increase in just psychologically, you're like, just like, fuck that. Right? If you have a Hollywood celebrity you're prepping, you want to do this with them for eight weeks. By week seven, they'll be like, you know what? I'm going to look about as good as I can. I'm done with this diet. And you're like, ah, shit. And quit early and that really sucks. If you want fat loss at a greater scale and you want to keep more of it off because you'll probably regain half the fat from this, that's not terrible. Not the best thing in the world. If you want to lose eight pounds of fat and keep eight pounds off, you need something like an eight-week diet, not like a four-week diet. That's it. Folks, go out there. Do your peak. Go be a waiter or waitress at that one restaurant in Hollywood on that peak day, just in a jolly way, handing out plates and food. And then finally, that executive producer from that one show you love is going to notice you. And you're going to be a fucking star. And when that happens, you remember, remember I was your friend before all this, so make sure to invite me on the set so I can, uh, I don't know what people, Scott, what do people do on set? Creep around? Yeah. I'm overqualified. I'll see you guys next time.